Okay, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, mommy and daddy, or daddies, I should say. How are you all going this afternoon? Thank you for your time and thank you for coming. It's good to, oh, to see daddies. I was in the back then and saying, wow, you know, long time you always hear a lot of mummies going, but it's always good to see the daddies coming out. So this evening, or this afternoon into evening, we are going to speak about money management. And I am going to start off by quoting a very lovely scripture verse that is very dear to me, which is in Jeremiah 29, 11. And this will help us to paint that entire picture of where we want to go in our financial security. So it says, I know the place or plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you and plans to give you hope and a future. So with that being said, God is very clear in his word that he does not want any one of us to be impoverished. Not so real? Yeah? So therefore, and some of us in this world, we just like to sit and wait. So we know the word, we know about proper planning, but we just sit down there and we wait for things as though it may just fall from the sky. So the first thing that I want to talk about this afternoon, springboarding from the scripture verse, is for proper financial planning to take place it first starts with you as an individual and being self-aware of who you are as a person. And some people may say, well, I know who I am. But if I give you a piece of paper and ask you to write about yourself, or if I put you on the spot and ask you to say something about who you are as an individual, what you like as an individual. Some people, they hem and they haw and they take a very long time. So financial planning and seeking financial dignity and sustainability starts with you, starts with self-awareness and having a very clear vision of what you want for yourself and your family as you build your future. So daddy, may I ask you your name please? Anthony. All right. Okay. So Anthony, if I may call you Anthony, do you have a very clear vision for yourself and your family? Yes, you do. If I was to give you a paintbrush and some colors, would you be able to draw it for me? Good? Yeah. And that is what we have to do as individuals. Have a very clear vision in our mind so we are self-aware of who we are. We are very clear as individuals of what our visions are for ourselves, and then we bring the family into it. Where do I see myself? as being financially sound as an individual, and then where do I want to go in the future? And then we have the family. So we bring the family understanding that when we have families, or if we intend to have a family, the whole picture becomes very different. Because we are not only planning for ourselves anymore, but we are now planning for our child or our children. And the Bible is also very clear about that, that we as individuals, we as mommies and daddies, we should not be selfish, but we should save, we should invest, not only for ourselves, but to leave a legacy, to give our children a foundation, a financial foundation that they themselves can build upon and then in addition to that, 
that they themselves could also pass down to their children. So we touch on self-awareness, understanding who you are as an individual. Some of us may be, don't know how to manage money and we need to dig within ourselves and ask ourselves, why do I bad spend? What is causing it? What is causing me that I get $20 and every month I spend in $100? What is causing that? Why can't I stay within my budget? And that is what money management is all about, is working with what you have, appreciating what you have, and making the necessary sacrifices to also grow what you have. So the self-awareness part is important. And then we go into a vision. You have a vision for yourself. And then with the vision now, you are talking about building financial sustainability or financial dignity for yourself. I am sure that all of us here, except the rich ones, understands what it means to be in lack. Lack, yes. <laughs> understands when you open your wallet or your purse and there's not enough. Anybody in here ever experienced that? You'll have to raise your hand if you don't want to. <laughs> no, and that's the reality. So we first have to face our realities and ask ourselves, how am I going to get myself out of that? And is it impossible? Because all of us in here want to live happy lives, not so happy, joyful lives. And having financial dignity or sustainability is part of having that in your life. So when we open our wallets and we open our purses, we want to see money. <laughs> yes? And we want to see money in a way that when we spend, we know we could spend not worrying if I spend this here, then this wouldn't be taken care of. So it means a sacrifice. Now, Miss, we, we have 20 minutes each, yes? All right. That's checking my time. So, vision, self-awareness, sacrificing. So financial planning comes with sacrifice. So we have to understand and appreciate where we are and what are the sacrifices that we need to make to have a good savings or investment. I was reading and I was looking at a video and the speaker spoke about a janitor and I'm going to give you a contrast. So we have the janitor who is working for, of course, menial pay. And we have the, a very educated man. I can't remember his name, a very educated man, world renowned, was honored by his peers and all of that. And when he died, and when the janitor died, he passed on and he left nothing. And when the janitor died, he died leaving $8 million for his children and also for hospital and church. And the reason that that could have happened is because you know, all of us, or some of us, love to live beyond our means. Not so? So because I see Tony, 
dress up nice and you wear the brands and all of that, I feel that I must dress like Tony. <laughs> but as my mother would say, I don't have a hands to see, I don't have a cent to see to hands wine in a matchbox. But a spending money that I don't have. So this rich person had the best home. Yeah? Swimming pool. I think the square footage of the house was 8,000 square footage. And of course, all the nice parties and all of that and people dining above the swimming pool and all these sorts of things. But at, at the end of the day, you think because you have a lot of money and you are spending, not in, and, and this person used to deal in finance as well, eh? but they decide that they would live it up. The janitor, however, with his menial pay, understood the importance of savings and understood the importance of investments. So of course, savings is, is, is money that you would be saving for daily use, and then investments is long time. Anytime you, 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 you speak about investments, you are, you're thinking long term. So he would invest his money, as small as it was, into shares and stocks. And that money grew over all the years. So it grew and grew and grew. And then when he passed on, he was able to leave $8 million for his family and the church in addition to the, 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 the hospital. And the rich person left nothing. And I don't want you to save and invest and leave everything for your children. But what I said is that you have to leave a foundation for them to start. That is important. That is what we do as parents, as mummies and daddies. We leave a foundation for our children to start. But you are quite right. You have to learn to enjoy your life while you are here. But I could ask a question. What do you mean by enjoying your life? Can you afford to enjoy your life? No, hypothetical, eh? I, I don't want you in, uh, divulging your personal business. <laughs> but it's this hypothetical because you see, Anna coming to here, you see, this is one of the downfalls that we have as human beings. We think that we want to enjoy our lives. We want to travel all over the world. But are we saving towards that? And that is what is important. So the, enjoy, the enjoyment is good. Are we planning for it? Are we saving for it? Are we even thinking? Because being in the financial industry for over 30 something years, and I have seen some persons, they think absolutely nothing about their winter experience. And how am I going to live in my winter experience. So I live it up while I am young, but while I am young, I am supposed to be planning and saving and investing for when I retire, when I am older, so that I can live a comfortable life as well. So in financial planning, it's all about sacrifice and what's the sacrifice that you want to make for yourself. Having that clear vision, let me just repeat myself for some persons who may have just come in. So we spoke about mommy, that if it is we want to have financial dignity or sustainability, we must first of all have a very clear understanding of who we are as individuals. And then secondly, we went into having a vision, not only for yourself, but a very clear vision of what you want and where you want to see your family. And financial planning also means including the children 
into it as well and let them understand whether mommy or da daddy can or cannot afford something at this point in time. We spoke about sacrificing. Are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices to achieve and to live a very comfortable life as you go along your life's journey? That's something good, mommy? Wonderful. So, I am going to pass you over to two of my favorite people, Tony and Rhea, and they are from CUNA Caribbean, and they are going to speak about the family indemnity plan. They are going to speak about the critical illness plan as well, and also about rescue shares, rescue loans, and the, loan, the insurance coverage that we have against those things for our members. So I'm not hogging the limelight all, all the time, right? I'm sharing. So, Sony and Rhea, the floor is yours. I think I will. Um, my name is Rhea Mukumi again. I'm an account executive at CUNA Caribbean Insurance Society Limited. And let me just tell you a little bit about the company that I represent. So we at CUNA Caribbean Insurance, we are the leading provider of insurance services for credit unions and their members. And we are over, we are spread across 12 territories in the Caribbean. And our tagline is for all people. And it's for all people because we believe that everybody, no matter your age, your gender, your race, your social background, everyone should have that comfort of financial security. And so that word financial security, I want to ask some questions. I want to probe a little bit. What does financial security mean to you? What does it mean to you? She starts to laugh like, oh gosh, why is she pick me? When you hear the word financial security or financial <laughs> stability, what does that mean to you? Come back to here. Okay. You, you seem like a very vocal person. What does financial security mean to you? I know you said you want to live and enjoy your life. What does it mean to you? Um, being able to buy something and not have to study about the price. So buy and not study about the price. So that's financial stability for you. All right. What about daddy in the back? What does it mean to you? A nest egg. Nice, nice. I'm coming back to you now. What does it mean to you? So if it is you, you were in the best state of your life financially, what would that look like for you? Right. So you could be able to, you don't have to worry, oh gosh, how am I going to pay this light bill? How am I going to do this? You're living comfortably, right? So the word financial security, it refers to that peace of mind that you feel that, you know, you have enough money to cover your expenses. Um, it also means that you, you have enough income to enjoy life, as you rightfully said, right? And now, yes, we hear financial security. And to us, we think financial security is saving, which is true. Yes. How do we gain financial security? Anybody? saving, investing, right? So yes, we save, we invest, we have an income, but does anybody think about the risk? So what if that source of income or sources of income that you have no longer exists, or you become ill, or you pass away, or something happens within your family that can damper that funds? What is your position now? What are we to do? right and so that means if you have nothing in place to mitigate those risks that means that you're not fully financially stable right so being fully financially stable means that you also have that nest egg that peace of mind that coverage to also mitigate any risk if a debt is to occur if a critical illness is to happen right so let me paint a picture for you Imagine you're a breadwinner of a family, right? You're the main source of income. And so they depend on you to pay the bills, send your children to school, everything, right? And let's say, God forbid, because we all know that life, <laughs> life is life, right? Life be life, right? So imagine if you were to fall ill suddenly, 
you have nothing in place for that illness, right? And so even though you had a certain quality of life that has now affected your quality of life, affect your ability to provide for your family, right? So what, would, what are we to do in that position? Yeah, we now may have to dig into savings. We're probably no longer going to get an income because we can't go to work. So what happens to us now? Yeah, and that's where insurance comes in, right? So insurance is a means or a protection against a financial loss. So in the event of any untimely passing, a debt, we know that we are financially covered. We don't have to dig into the savings. We don't have to touch on those things that we work so hard for, right? So you know that you, you have, if anything has happened to you, you have this insurance to protect you against that. And you still have your savings, right? You can still be able to provide for your family in that time of need, right? I'll paint our next picture for you. Imagine you, you're still paying a mortgage, right? You're the breadwinner of the family. You become ill or you pass away. Someone passes away. And so who's going to pay that mortgage now? And you have no insurance to cover this loan. I mean, I'll tell you this. There was a point in time where institutions did not make that mandatory. Yeah. Right? It's now mandatory also to safeguard the institution, but also yourself. Right? Because, as I said, you didn't have the insurance. You passed away. Um, let's say the spouse wasn't working, right? So that means that who's going to pay this mortgage? And then if the mortgage isn't paying, what, what happens? Asset gets seized, right? And then so your family has no home to live in. And so that's what insurance is about. And at Western United Credit Union, they would have partnered with CUNA Caribbean Insurance to ensure and safeguard their members that in their time of need or any stage of their life, that they are financially protected. Protected against their loans, their savings. If they were to become critically ill, every stage of their life is covered. So yes, you go into Western United, you save, you get your loan, and then you know that your loan is automatically covered through CUNA Caribbean Insurance, and this is actually a benefit that you get for free at Western United Credit Union. Right? You go into other institutions and sometimes you have to pay for your own coverage. Right? So up to $100,000 in coverage, you, your loans are covered. So in the event that you have an untimely passing, you have a loan within the credit union, that loan is automatically paid off. No cost to you. Right? So you know that saying, the debt dies with the debtor? That's what this product is about. And so from just being a member of the credit union, you have your loan, you are automatically covered. Similarly, Western United as credit union as well, they came to us and they also said, you know what, our members need protection against their savings as well. And so we, they also offer the life savings product. Again, no cost to their members. You join the credit union, you start saving, you automatically have that coverage for free. No charge to you, right? And so what will happen is, if you were to pass away, you know we, that word um, generational wealth, that is what we want to create here. So you have your savings within the credit union, instead of withdrawing the savings that you have, so you know things come up sometimes, instead of withdrawing, we always encourage borrow against your shares because if you touch that savings, then you are taking away from your nest egg, right? And then when you take away from that nest egg, you have no insurance coverage anymore, right? Because what will happen, if, especially when you start saving at a younger age, sometimes your savings can actually double what you have. So you go home with the savings that you have plus the insured amount. So for example, let's say you have $20,000 in savings and you pass away, your, your beneficiary will go home with $20,000 in savings, plus we double it and we give them an extra $20,000. And this is just from being a member of Western United Credit Union. So we also have other products that we offer that 
you know, members can decide to enroll onto, and that is our flagship product. This is a product that people know and love. It's called the Family Indemnity Plan, and then we also have a Critical Illness Plan. So I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, and he's going to dive a little bit more into our member paid products. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony Raj. I'm also an account executive with CUNA Caribbean. So today, I am just going to focus on the member paid products at Western United. Um, as Rhea said, it's the Family Indemnity Plan. Who here ever heard about the FIP? What, do you th what was your experience with the FIP? What did you hear about the FIP? Um, basically, you are, if you pass, you are, um, you are putting your family in place, or if anyone that passes in your family, they are covered. So you, you are able to receive an amount according to your, your package Correct. that you choose. Correct. And there you will be able to comfortably bury your family. Correct. So the family indemnity plan, it's a final rights plan. So the plan actually covers you. So the plan actually covers you and five other family members for just one premium. We have premiums starting at low, as low as $52.80. There is no other product in the market as a family indemnity plan. It's second to none. So it actually covers you, your spouse, your kids under the age of 26, and a pair of parents. So you can either cover your two parents, your spouse's two parents, or one of each and the plans start as i said again as low as 52 dollars and 80 cents we have seven different coverages so it can actually go however you want to spend your money so we actually work with persons according to how they want to spend their funds and we advise persons to spend according to their budget so let's say you budget to spend a hundred dollars in insurance for the month for your family so that could actually put you at a plan c which is one of our middle plans and you can actually get twenty thousand dollars in the event of a death so as sir said there he wants to enjoy himself so this plan is there for that reason so you're putting that in place in case anything is to happen to you um, so that is basically what the family indemnity plan is the Family Critical Illness Plan is set up just like the Family Indemnity Plan. So again, it's one premium and it covers you and five other family members as well. But it covers you in the event of a critical illness. So it actually covers cancer, heart attack, stroke, paralysis, and major burns. So again, it actually covers you, a spouse, kids under the age of 26, and a pair of parents as well. So our plans are very straightforward and it's to the point, it gets the job done and it's very helpful for persons who, let's say, who don't have a high amount of income but who wants to be benefited and put things in place for anything that can happen to them in the event of a critical illness or even death. And all our products are available at the Western United Credit Union. And that is our member paid product at the Western United Credit Union. So if you have any questions about the Family Indemnity Plan or the Critical Illness Plan, you can either speak to Ms. McComey or Mr. Ferret, or you can visit the Credit Union and ask about it. It's very easily accessible, and I know no one here will have a problem with the Family Indemnity Plan. So yeah, so that's basically what the Family Indemnity Plan and FCIP is. Thank you. We would have spoken about self-awareness. We would have spoken about having a... Tony, help me out here. A vision for yourself. And having a very clear vision for yourself is very important. Knowing who you are is very important for financial planning. That's very important. Because sometimes we have to sit back and ask ourselves, why am I having such difficulties in managing my finances? That's very important. 
And the only way that we can answer that question is if we become more self-aware of who we are. And we need to answer those questions very honestly. But on the journey to becoming more financially prudent, sustainable, and having financial dignity, so when I open my wallet and my purse, I'm feeling good. So I know I could spend because I don't have to study the light bill or the telephone bill or the children. So I can spend with an ease of mind and ease in my spirit because I have decided that whatever I earn, whether mommy is... No, let me see what's up here. <laughs> whether I am earning $20 or whether I am earning $10, whatever I earn, I must have discipline to put something aside for a rainy day. We have a rainy day fund in the organization and sometimes when members come, I ask them the question, is it raining? <laughs> because some of us as human beings, we don't have the discipline. And because something pops up and we did not budget well enough, I am running to touch my rainy day fund. But it is for that rainy day emergency fund. So that is why I ask the question, mommy, is the rain falling? <laughs> <laughs> mommy say all the time. No, and that is a reality for some of us, you know. And I love that answer, mommy. That is an answer for all of us, and it's a very realistic answer. For some of us, rain is constantly falling. And sometimes we feel as though we are spiraling out of control because we just cannot seem to get a grip on our finances. Because things are coming at us quickly, quick, especially when we have children. And that is why it is so important for us to be disciplined, to have determination, to know ourselves, to include our family in our, in our vision, in our plans. Because if we are operating as a team, in our home, then I am not saying, and please don't get me wrong, that we are to burden our children with our responsibilities as an adult. But what I am saying is that if we desire to be financially sound and to feel that sense of dignity and pride that we have to call family meetings not so miss and we have to be honest with first of all ourselves and our children on what we can and can't afford and there's nothing wrong with that a lot of us in this world are in a financial mess because of false pride. So Miss Fly now to, to Europe. So eh, eh, but who is me? I go into. <laughs> Miss can afford it. I can't afford it. But I go in, in the bank and the credit union and I'm boring to show to show she I could go to. <laughs> when Miss come back, Miss nice. But you have the loan that drag, and we love the loans, eh? The credit union loves loans. No, no, nothing wrong with that. And the 
but at the end of the day, can you afford it? So you can have your savings and you say, listen, as Rhea would have said, instead of spending my deposits, let me put it on my shares, borrow against it, take my trip, not looking at Miss and what Miss is doing or not doing, but taking the trip with my family because I want to create memorable moments with them. And you see all these little stories that I'm telling you, their reality, yeah? that is why some persons never realize their financial dreams. Because I am comparing myself with mommy, I am comparing myself with daddy, and I have to, to get the, the, the new television she get. And then when I walk in the sun, I say, oh good, $30,000, but now man, I have to get that. How come she can get that and I can have that, but I can't afford it. And even though I want it, am I willing to have the discipline and to sacrifice to get it? But not because mommy wants it, but because I want it. So I am saving to achieve what it is I want to achieve. I am investing because the savings, as I would have mentioned before, and I'm just going to break it down, is for the now. So I want something now, I am going to save. But if I am talking investment and growing my money, and you could grow your money while you're saving as well, eh? it means that hey, don't be running and touching your rainy day fun ma'am or mommy because the rain always falling. It means that what we would have to do is to sit and look at our finances, sorry Tony, and bear ourselves to the reality of what our finances is showing us. And then we would need to make the sacrifice to do some trimming. And as we trim and make the sacrifice, and daddy, we must have patience with ourselves. Eh? I want to put that in there too. We must have patience because we are doing something and sometimes we may fall off the wagon or we may get frustrated because we find it is not happening fast enough, mommy. But we must have patience with ourselves because we are now painting a new picture for our lives and our families. So we must be patient. So, Miss, I can have five more minutes? Five minutes. Right. So, huh? No, no, I'm just saying, you said five more minutes. I said, I'm Oh, it's just, okay, all right. <laughs> so, I just want to leave you all with what all of us said this evening. Or this afternoon, it's still before six. That if you want to have an experience, a financially sound future, it starts with you. It starts with you understanding who you are as an individual. And for some of us, it starts with us telling the truth on our monies. Some of us, there's good lie on our monies, you know. <laughs> saying that our monies could afford quite a cross so when it could only reach here. But because we want to lie to ourselves, we want to impress our neighbors, we want to impress our friends, so we lie, we tell lies in our monies and nothing can cripple you financially than living in like Alice in Winter Wonderland. So we must be honest with ourselves. 
I'm going to close by giving a little nice little story. Anybody know Walt Disney? Yes. Walt Disney. He had a vision for himself and his daughters. When he started out, he was very poor eating out of cans, eating beans out of a can. But when he would walk his daughters and he saw this, this amusement park and he was very impressed with the amusement park because of the music and the horses and all these things and taking his children there. But as he came closer, he realized that it wasn't all that it chucked up to be. So then he got a vision. Because some of the car on the carousels, the horses to the front was moving, but those to the back was nailed down. So it wasn't what it really was. And then he started to have this vision and this goal of creating what we now know as Walt Disney, the Disney world, a vision, a dream. It did not happen overnight. It took time for him to get the cash. But many years after his death, and I am sure that if he was to have an opportunity to come to life, he would have never thought that his legacy would still be living today. And where it is today, far better than he even laid the foundation. So when I spoke about you as a parent or parents leaving a, an inheritance, a legacy for your children, that is what I'm talking about. And that is what we want for our children, leaving a financial, as daddy said here, a nest egg. That is important. So, I believe I'm running out of my... F nah. Miss, I've uh, taken my seconds, eh? <laughs> I'm almost there. So, let us all remember that. And let us have a creative imagination of where we want to be financially. And that is wh what we do at Western United Credit Union, a credit union that has been around for almost 100 years. This credit union is an amalgamation between two credit unions, Pokerit St. James Credit Union and Southeast Port of Spain Credit Union. And at Westview, we are very proud and we work very hard hand in hand with our members to ensure that they have financial sustainability and financial dignity. Our approach is a very holistic approach. So we are not only interested in your well-being financially, but we are also interested in your well-being mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. So we take care of the entire person. You can visit our website at Anyway, you will see it on the bag when you get your bag. But you will visit our website and you will see all our great work that we are doing with our members and the wider community as well. So, mommy, the rain would not always be falling. No, and it's serious, eh? And I really love your answer. It just means that sometimes we have to sit together, daddy, and we have to plan. And when we are planning, we have to invite our children and we have to invite our wives or our husbands at the table to plan as well. And part of financial planning is understanding and having the strength and the courage to say no. Yeah? Thank you very much. So thank you, Mr. Ferret. Thank you to his team, members of Kuna, Ms. Ria McComey, um, and her colleague, 
and uh, all the other persons that came along with them in order to make this presentation a success. And I trust that we were able to gather that it's important for us to be financially sound in order for our children to be okay. Because if you are having financial problems, it comes over on them and they take it on.